Hi, my name is Peter O'Shea. I'm the owner of American Drive Basement Systems. We're here on location in Connecticut, and we have a, uh, a basement that's got a whole lot of water. And we're going to demonstrate how some of the other basement waterproofing systems work and, and match up. And we're going to be touching on where you manage your basement water and the pros and cons of, of different ways of doing it. I brought along a piece of another type of waterproofing system and I'm going to show you how it would be installed and you'll be able to see exactly how it's supposed to work. But this system sits right on top of the footing. Now I have it right on top of the floor, but I just, for the purpose of showing you how much of a trench that you would get with this particular type of system. So this would be on top of the footing. Now the trench that they would dig would probably be about that much more wide than where the, the gutter is. So you're gonna get a trench about that big. This would be dropped down on top of the footing itself. And then a little bit of stone would be applied out here. And then they would re-cement over about an inch or so, inch and a quarter, back on top of it. Water's coming right up through the area where we're breaking up the floor. That's hydrostatic pressure. That's water pushing up on the floor. Now this water, if it were gonna get over to, th to this system, would be sliding underneath the floor to get over to the drainage. If you're going to create a release of pressure underneath the floor at one end, water's going to flow towards that release of pressure. And in so doing, that can disrupt the kind of support that you would have underneath and holding up your floor. So it can actually create a situation where the support of your floor would be jeopardized. We've removed some of the basement floor. We have a nice wide trench here. With this particular footing, it's a little wider than a normal footing, which is about four inches. Normal footing would end right around there. This one comes out to right there. So it's about a foot wide. In order to accommodate that, we had to make the trench much wider. And you can see we've taken out the, the pieces of the floor here. You can see it's filling up right around the sides of the floor and over top on, onto the footing. This is really important. Because if the water is right here, that means the entire floor has water up against the bottom of it, and it's come around, and the water is surrounding the entire floor. This is what I mean when I talk about where you manage your water determines just how dry you can get your basement. This water here is filled up all the way around the floor. There's a particular type of system that sits right on top of the footing, and I have a piece of it here. So it would sit there, and you can see the water fills up, is sitting right up next to it. So if the water level is here, the whole floor is sitting in water. Concrete's porous, it's, it absorbs water. So in this scenario, your whole floor will be sitting in water and it will always be damp because it'll have access to this water, even though this is gonna be a way for the water to, to flow through, or, or I should say overflow into a, a sump basket and be pumped up out away from the house. But for water to get into this type of system, your whole floor is sitting in water. We have your footing right down here, and we come out, we come out, and here's the edge of the footing. Like I said, it's a nice wide footing, and the footing comes out to about here. If you were to be able to establish your drainage down within the depth of the footing, say we went down about 10 or 12 inches, depending on how deep the footing goes, and we were able to set up stone and pipe, a corrugated perforated pipe, and have that pitched around to a basket, none of this water would be able to develop uh, and fill up around your floor. We'd be managing it where we should be much, much lower than this. This is not where you want to manage water, especially on this particular type of foundation. Just think, if you could pull the plug on this water down 10 or 12 inches, it would all drain. And if that was the amount of drainage you put around the entire foundation, you would keep that water level 10 to 12 inches below the bottom of the floor, as opposed to what this type of system does, it, where it manages the water within the depth of the floor. What I mean by that is the water level has to get high enough so it sits within the depth of the floor before any of it actually will travel through the drainage. Not the way you want to go, especially with this particular type of foundation. You're always going to have a damp, uh, moist, or even wet floor with this type of scenario. Plus, when you re-cement the floor back, you can't get it to the thickness that you need. Anytime you remove part of your basement floor, you got to put back a minimum of three and a half inches, and that's code. So this sits where the actual floor would have to be in order for this particular system to be code compliant. 
So that's a real problem. And it's one that you'd like to check with your building inspector of your town before you would ever want to think about doing a system that sits on top of your footing. So we've gone over how the gutter system works. There's another uh, system out there. We call it the box uh, for obvious reasons. With the box system, the difference with this is that they, they put it just inside of the edge of the footing. Now normally, the footing would end about here, and the box system would then be sitting right around here. We have an extra wide, wide footing, so that the way that they would install this is they would have to come out and put it here. But always within the depth of the floor, so you're still getting that same problem that you have with the gutter system where the water's got to flood the entire area underneath, the, underneath your floor, and the whole floor is sitting in water before any water actually flows through the, the so-called drainage. The other issue is, this is a corner piece to it, uh, and uh, I'm showing this because it, it's where the clean-out is. If you look here, it's a lid that, that opens up so that they can flush out the, the insides of, of this box system. And the reason that there's a, a, an issue or that it needs to be cleaned out is that it's not pitched, so water kind of gets stuck in there and stagnates and grows uh, fungus and bacteria and a thing called iron ochre, which clogs them, so they need these clean-out ports uh, in order to facilitate that. So if this were to be put on here, what I'd like to show you is, here's the lid to it, like this. So you'd have to have it here, but then they re-cement. If you look, they obviously can't put too much cement back onto this particular type of system, or else they would completely cover their, their clean-out opening. Here's where the problem comes in. Anytime that you remove your floor, any part of your basement floor, when you replace it, it has to be to a thickness by code of three and a half inches. So this particular system, in order to facilitate the clean out, shows that you're never going to get anywhere near that three and a half inch mark. So you'd have to check with your, with your local building inspector if you're ever even going to think of this type of system to make sure you're not having a, a code violation installed as an attempt to try to waterproof your basement. Yeah, it's always something when you can wash your hands in the trench where you're trying to put your waterproofing in. Kind of shows that you really need the right kind of system uh, to be able to handle this volume of water. If you've liked the video, please subscribe and hit the bell, and that'll notify you when our future videos are coming out. And thanks for watching.